many triangles involved in that uh, in this structure. And when you have many triangles involved, then you start to have very strong relationship between, let's say, four nodes, among four nodes or five nodes. So a, you know, let's say, uh, what is a, you know, the three, uh, I think the, uh, the, the first meaningful one is three trusts, right? right. Because uh, you know, two trusts will be the triangle, yeah. right? So for us, three trusts, what happens is that um, the definition is that uh, you, every tr uh, uh, edge, right? Every edge okay. in the uh, in the in the truss will be involved in at least uh, k minus one, no, k minus two, k minus two triangles. So if it's a three truss, right? It will be involved at least in one triangle, okay. and four truss will be at least involved in two triangles. So here, if I look at this graph just intuitively, I look at each of these, you know, uh, each of these edges. I ask how many triangles are involved. You know, uh, is each, uh, each edge involved? So here, when I look at this, it has one triangle, two triangles, right? So this edge is involving two triangles. Look at this edge. Is this triangle and this triangle. And here, this triangle and this triangle. So this is a very, very tightly connected subgraph. Some of the edges may be involving more than two. So th this one is involving two triangles inside the structure, but it's also involving one of the triangles outside. So that's why it's at least, OK? Edge each edge should be involved in at least k minus two triangles. And so this is a four truss, right? This is a four truss data structure because every edge is involving four minus two, which is two triangles or more, okay? Two or more triangles. Does that make sense? And whenever you have a very high density of triangles in this kind of structure, you have very, very strong interaction or strong correlation among the nodes, right? Among, among nodes. In this case, among these four nodes, right? So this, essentially, a four trust take us from the triangles, right, into a four node situation, right? And then you have five trusts, six trusts, and so on. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So. One of the things that, uh, you know, that, that uh, you know, Facebook and so on do is that they will use trust to determine, to try to empirically determine the community, the, the maximum size community they can find with strong interactions. Right? So they will find as mid, high a K as possible because that they want to be able to find the biggest group that's still coherent, still highly connected among all the members, right, in that group. Does that make sense? Okay. So there are many, many ways you can do trust decomposition. And uh, one of the uh, kind of the, uh, the, the, the intuitive way is by counting the triangles, okay, counting the triangles and uh, uh, determine the number of triangles every edge is involved. Remember, we're, when we're doing the intersection, right, we're taking each edge, right, when we count the triangles, we're taking each edge and we're finding the number of intersections, right, between those two nodes. And the number of intersections gives us how, what, what, what does it give us? The number of triangles that this edge is involved in. So it naturally gives us these numbers, right? So every thread is going to take an edge, right? Calculate the inter intersection, and then write that number down. <laughs> okay. So this gives us a annotated graph. Okay, annotated graph for all the edges, right? The number of triangles that uh, that edge is involved in. Okay. So this gives us that, and then so we can say, let's give me a, uh, you know. Three trusts. So let essentially we can delete. Let's say k equal, uh, set k equal to three. So 
this goes beyond you know the uh, k equal to you know uh, so so we can eliminate all the edges that have less than k minus two triangles because k minus if if the edge is involved in less than k minus two triangles it cannot be used to qualify something for truss right I'm looking for a structure where every edge is involving at least k minus two triangles. So I'll go ahead and eliminate all the edges. Okay, I eliminate all the edges that have less than k minus two triangles. So so I will go ahead and eliminate and just remove those edges conceptually. Okay, I just remove all those edges, and then I redo the triangle counting. Right, but we, when I remove the edges, I also affect, for example, this one. This one will have fewer triangles. So then I would start to do the. I do when I do the calculation again. I have a everything in this structure is now two. So I have already identified a k equal to four structure. Right, everything here is two, right, two more of them, right, and so then I say, can I get away with five in this graph? Can I find a substructure where all the edges are involved in at least three triangles? I can't. So that's why, you know, when k is equal to you know the, to, to five. All the edges will be eliminated, so I would not be able to find any substructure. Okay, so this tells us the biggest community, tightly knit community that I can find in this graph, is a four-member community, right? And I know which ones they are. And this thing uses triangle counting very heavily. The first phase is a triangle counting. And then after we eliminated the edge, we still need to redo triangle counting, right? And sometimes people try to update triangle counting rather than totally redo triangle counting. So there are, there are like incremental methods versus recalculation methods, right? So this will be a, a use case for triangle counting. And there are you know, other kind of analytic, uh, analytics, but uh, this is probably the most widely used community detection algorithm uh, in, the, you know, in the kind of social media in the world. Okay? So uh, we're right at the time, so you, know, the, you can you know, finish up. You know, so that k equal to 5, you, know, you, you cannot find any more uh, substructure, so this thing is only 5. So, um, here is you know a, a summary of you know how you know the iteration, but that's essentially what I just talked about. So um, in about another week or so, uh, we will be releasing the uh, you know the triangle counting uh, homework, okay, uh, MP. So um, again, the base method is every thread will pick up one of the edges and then do the ping pong increment, right, to, you know, then you have the triangle count, that's the base. If you want to, you know, the, <coughs> have some fun with it, you know, uh, try to think about, you know, maybe you can do the binary search, right, you can just say, in the same kernel, you can detect the case and then say, I'm going to do the binary search versus the ping pong, right, you can do that. And after the dynamic parallelism lectures, uh, you know, with, uh, that will start uh, next week, uh, we would, in fact, I may or may not be able to come back in time for the, uh, for the class. So my, I think my flight is supposed to land in Chicago or something uh, at uh, 2 o'clock, 1.30. So uh, you know, uh, if it doesn't work, I think I have a video. So you can watch the video for the first lecture, right? So we'll, we'll figure out uh, the, the details. I'll let you guys know. And after the dynamic lecture, you can actually optionally do a dynamic kernel launch for the excessively long you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, neighbor list, and we'll, I'll give you extra credit. Okay. 
So that's it for now. So hopefully I'll see you Tuesday. If it doesn't work, you'll be watching me on the video. Okay? <laughs>